In other news, Russian airstrikes have hit a dam in southern Ukraine, flooding houses near President Zelensky's home city. Well, the Ukrainian official says many as eight missiles uh, struck the reservoir. These are the pictures of the damage they caused. It supplies water to a, an area of a, a pre-war population of some 600,000 people. Now, rescue workers have been evacuating those and attempting to repair the damage there, as you can see here. Uh, currently, no reported casualties, which is, is encouraging. It comes as Ukraine's counterattack continues in the south of the country. And joining us now is the Ukrainian Member of Parliament, Kira Rudik. Um, Kira, bring us up to date with the latest. We, we hear, of course, um, the results of massive progress by the Ukrainian military. Just, just bring us the latest. So I'm extremely happy uh, that we are talking about the advances that Ukrainian army is making and the counter-offense that is happening on our eastern and southern territories. For the last six months, we have been saying, please give us the weapons and you will see what we can do with it. So now everybody can see. And I want to extend my gratefulness for all the support that we have received, because right now all the advances that we are doing is the mutual win. About the uh, dam uh, in Krivirich, of course, Russia is extremely upset uh, about the advances and about the counter-offense that Ukrainian forces are on. They are upset about the liberated cities and that they have to, as they say, regroup their forces. So, um, and we know that they would be committing another terror. And uh, what we are seeing right now is uh, just simple terrorist attack. There was no military stations near the dam. There was uh, nothing that can prove that they did not aim to hit the dam. So they did. And they are trying to uh, cut the supplies and cut the water from Ukrainian uh, cities and uh, basically create a flood. So what we are seeing and what we are calling right now, again, uh, this is a terrorism. And Putin needs to be treated as a terrorist as he is. We understand that there would be additional attacks on our cities. We anticipate that. And again, it is a matter of uh, the weapons and supplies that we would have to protect ourselves. We are extremely waiting for the F-Jets that need to be provided to us so we can protect our skies and protect our citizens and protect critical infrastructure in Ukraine so that when we know that there would be attack, we wouldn't be just warning people about that, but there would be actual things that we could do. Um, right now, we are getting ready for an extremely complicated autumn and winter that will be hard not only for the whole Europe uh, and um, our allies, but physically will be extremely hard for Ukraine. Russia will be attacking heating stations and energy stations. Russia will be attacking our critical infrastructure. This plan is clear. And the issue that we are seeing is that there is not much that we can do to prepare to that. We are telling people to buy warm clothes because we know that there was a high possibility that there would be no heating during the winter. And Ukrainian winters are really tough. Going back on the military side of things, uh, also in winter will be harder to fight. And this is why all the territories that we will regain until the cold hits for us will be easier to maintain and will be easier to, to keep them and to keep the defense. So Indeed, this as, is why as, our... Yes, as you, as you were indicating, the, clearly the strategic importance of what your military forces have been able to uh, achieve. But we thank you very much in, on bringing us uh, up to date there from Kyiv. And of course, uh, we wish you and, and the rest of the civilian population there uh, well as, as you did. You face this autumn and winter. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much.